Hello and welcome to this week's edition of Checks and Balances TV. Today's program is entitled Extreme Financial Planning, what some people are doing to keep the money rolling in. So let's see how today's news may impact your financial future. As the economy continues to suffer, it appears that more and more Americans are taking matters into their own hands in hopes of achieving financial freedom. Unfortunately, a growing number of people are engaging in deviant activities and committing crimes in the process, all for the sake of making money. From fake slips and falls in grocery stores, to staging auto accidents, to freezing a loved one's deceased body to continue collecting their pension or Social Security benefits, it's becoming a sign of the times that desperate people are willing to take desperate measures. And it seems they're willing to do just about anything to get ahead financially. Okay, so what's really going on here? Let's check the facts using our checks and balances process. No matter where in the country you live, there has likely been a story in your local news about somebody who tried to get away with a crime, sometimes even murder, in an effort to make money. One case that made national headlines recently involved a woman from South Carolina named Susan Diane Hendricks, who was charged with killing four family members on October 14th. Pickens County Sheriff David Stone called the quadruple murder a horrendous act of evil. And the reason given for Hendricks's committing the crime was to collect the life insurance money. In another case closed earlier this year, it was discovered that an 86-year-old man from Florida, Alan Dunn, had kept his wife's body, dead body, in a freezer for over 10 years. His reason? To continue collecting her Social Security benefits. Dunn told neighbors that since 2000, his wife Margaret was living in a nursing home. Friends of the family eventually found Margaret's body in a freezer on the back porch after they had gone to the condo to get Alan's final affairs following his suicide. Financially strapped criminals have not only limited themselves to life insurance and social security scams. Insurance fraud is the second most costly white collar crime in the U.S. behind tax evasion, according to the Coalition Against Insurance Fraud. The FBI estimates the total cost of non-health insurance fraud, which includes auto, property, casualty, and commercial, to be more than $40 billion per year, which in turn costs the average U.S. family between $400 to $700 annually in increased premiums. The National Insurance Crime Bureau is a nonprofit organization dedicated to preventing, detecting, and defeating insurance fraud and vehicle theft. The NICB has reported that thousands of people across the country stage auto accidents each year to cash in on their insurance policies. And the top five states that have generated the most questionable claims from staged accidents are Florida, New York, California, Texas, and Illinois. Okay, so now that we've checked the facts, let's balance this news using our checks and balances process to determine what action you should take today. According to the NICB, questionable claims are pulled for closer review and investigation based on one or more indicators of possible fraud. For example, common indicators for vehicle fraud include faked damage, questionable vehicle theft, and suspicious fires or arson. The Bureau released its Questionable Claims Referral Reason Analysis for the first half of 2011 in August, which examined six different insurance categories including property, casualty, commercial, workers' compensation, vehicle, and miscellaneous. The number of questionable claims in these six categories rose 18% between the first half of 2009 and 2011. Jim Quiggle, the Director of Communications for the Coalition Against Insurance Fraud, said the poor state of the economy has had a direct impact on the increase in questionable claims. Quiggle said the average fraudster makes small-time claims, such as supposedly losing an engagement ring and reporting the loss, even though it's later found at a pawn shop. There are two ways to look at the rising numbers for questionable claims. First, it would seem that more people are turning to crime as a way to help themselves out financially. But the second part of this equation involves insurance companies that are investigating more of these cases to make sure these criminals are caught and brought to justice. Such is the case of 72-year-old Janella Howard, 
who was looking for $300,000 in compensation following a slip and fall accident in a Florida supermarket. However, store video showed Howard moving her foot back and forth on the floor where the liquid appeared to be spilled. She then fixed her hair and sat down on the floor and then called for help after her supposed fall. Howard now faces up to 35 years in prison if convicted. The NICB reported a 57% increase in questionable claims for slip and fall claims from 2008 through the first half of 2010. Okay, so what's the bottom line here? Unlike most white collar crimes involving financial fraud, which are committed by seasoned professionals, those guilty of insurance fraud tend to be average people that have become desperate to make a buck. But to be so desperate as to freeze a loved one's body or even kill someone is well beyond extreme financial planning. It's been said that money is the root of all evil. And in these crazy cases, that certainly appears to be true. Organizations like the Coalition Against Insurance Fraud and the National Insurance Crime Bureau were formed to protect businesses and consumers from criminals who commit these heinous acts, which can also lead to a rise in your and my insurance premiums. So do your part by properly saving, planning, and living within your means and doing things the right way, and you will put yourself in a position to enjoy what matters most in life, which is family, health, and financial freedom. And now for Matt's weekly financial tip, tool, or technique. Health insurance fraud is by far the largest type of insurance fraud today. And some agents and even consumers are both guilty of participating in these crimes. As an example, the ongoing changes in health care reform following the passage of the Affordable Health Care for America Act in 2009 have confused many people, setting them up for scammers to move in and take advantage of them. So here are four health insurance fraud prevention tips to protect yourself from unscrupulous health insurance agents. Tip number one, don't fall for deadlines. Insurance agents should not pressure you to sign up for a health insurance policy today by giving you a deadline. If that's the case, don't do business with them and report them to your state's insurance commissioner. Tip number two, understand the policy terms. Never commit to buying a health insurance policy without fully understanding the terms of the policy. Read all the fine print yourself and be sure you fully understand what it all means. Tip number three, contact the insurance company yourself. If you ever question anything an insurance agent tells you, pick up the phone and contact the insurance company directly and ask as many questions as you need to. Health insurance fraud could end up stealing precious money from you as well as leaving you without the coverage you thought you had. And tip number four, contact your state's Department of Insurance. Check out the insurance agent you're considering doing business with prior to giving them your business. Ask your Department of Insurance if the agent is properly licensed and if there have ever been any complaints against them. Insurance fraud costs billions of dollars a year and almost always causes your insurance premiums to go up. Holding yourself accountable by becoming informed and protecting yourself from all types of insurance fraud is the best form of prevention. Be sure to log on to our website and download our newest report, The Truth About Wall Street, a free report that reveals the origins of Wall Street, where backroom deals and good old boy handshakes were the norm and how today's Wall Street antics are still stranger than fiction. And finally, remember that only you can control your financial future. You can succeed. You just need confidence and determination. I'm Matthew J. Reddick from Checks and Balances TV. Until next week, dump debt, invest wisely, believe in yourself, and make it happen.